All right. Um, good morning. It's still morning. Ms. Mr. Thompson, would you introduce yourself? Tell us your name and your DOC number, please, sir. Okay, uh, Roland David Thompson, 455074. Sorry, Mr. Thompson, I'm Cheryl Renatza. This is Mr. Roche to my left, Mr. Freeman to my right. I want to acknowledge that we have Kathy Rogers, Harley Thompson, and Casey Thompson, all, uh, who are here by Zoom, uh, who all will be speaking in support. We'll ask them to do so at the appropriate time. Let me just read some information into the record. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Roche. Your case has been assigned to him. Mr. Thompson, you're a first offender. You're serving a 25-year sentence for uh, a conviction in Richland Paris of forcible rape. You were sentenced in May 2002. You have parole eligibility, which was March 4th, 2023. You do not earn good time. You have a full-term date, December 4th, 2026. Is that information correct, sir? Oh, you're on mute. Let's see. Didn't hear you. Yes, is that right? Is that information right? Okay, I think they put you back on mute. But uh, answer Mr. Roche's questions. Good morning, Mr. Thompson, how are you? Okay. Good, Mr. Thompson. Uh, you currently uh, 55 years old, is that correct? Yes, sir. And you're a first felony offender. Yes, sir. And you've served approximately 22 and a half years of a 25 year sentence. Is that correct? It's 21 years, four months. Okay, you are out on bond at, at some point? No, sir. After your initial arrest, did you buy it out? No, sir. When I was arrested, I, I stayed all through pretrial. I never bonded out. Okay. But according to your good time date, you have about two and a half years left on your sentence. Well, three and a half years. Okay, so uh, you're correct. About 21 years and some months. Yes, sir. 21 years, four months. Okay, great. Now, Mr. Thompson, I'm going to enter some information into the record after I ask you a few questions. If any of the information is incorrect, would you please correct me, okay? Okay. Now, what is your current job assignment? I work P.E. Garment. Would you Prison, repeat? Prison Enterprise, Garment oh, Factory. Yeah. Okay, and what do you do for President Enterprise? I'm one of the mechanics that works on the sewing machines. Great, okay. And you have trustee status? I'm Stride. Okay, you're Stride, okay. Out of programs that you've completed, you've completed all four phases of your sex offender treatment, is that correct? Yes, sir. Tell me exactly what you uh, got out of sex offender treatment? Uh, I learned that things work in a cycle. And uh, I learned some of the definitions about denial. You know, we're not to, to deny. We're not to justify. And we're not to blame. Um, it helped me see inside what would, because uh, one of the reasons why I left Rich and Paris, I wanted to take the course, because I wanted to see what would cause me, I wanted to understand myself, what would cause me to do do something like that. Um, um, it's been a while since I took it, sir, um, but it, like, Looking at magazines, movies, anything like that will initiate and 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 it'll leave a like a picture in your mind and uh, deviant fantasies. Like that's one of the one of the definitions. And uh, I had to think about what I think. I I had to be conscious of what I think about at all time. A, a, a thought will lead to something else. In essence, what you're trying to say is you. You were glad you took the course because you wanted to understand why a 33-year-old man 
would have sexual relationship with an 11 year old. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you've also completed nurturing parents, anger management, inside out diet, 100 hours pre release, and you currently enroll in victim impact training. Tell me how that is going. I like it. I like victim impact because um, I get to see, especially the videos, we get to see the impact of what it does to the other person. And the other person's life has changed forever. Nothing is ever the same again. Um, and, and not just for that person, but for the, the close mem the family members in, in, in the community. And I can understand, like, some of those people feel like they, they don't care what happens to uh, when a person convicted. They don't care what happens to him when he's in prison because of that, that hurt that they have or their family member, whoever it might have been. And I can understand that. You know, I hurt for some of those, those people because when I watch the video, I think about my actions and uh, about what my actions did. And I, know, I, can, I can understand, too, because the 21 years I've been incarcerated about some of the things that happened to my family that might not would have happened if I'd have been there. So I can understand the hurt to have. And then when, when your life changes, it changes forever and it's never gonna be that way again. So basically your victim is not the only victim. Your family, her family are all victims. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, any other programs that you completed that you wanna mention? Well, thinking for a change. I like the way when uh, a certain problem comes up, they, we work it out like a skit in class and we put our fingers to a head and when it, to our mind and, and we think about our reaction before we do it. And we think about maybe what our words are and, and what that words or that reaction is gonna bring back out of another person. So it's really just telling us to think before we act. Um, and I- Okay, okay. I see you have a diploma in horticulture. Yes, sir. In culinary arts, and you are a tutor for culinary arts. Is that correct? Yes, sir. For five years, I see that you have good family support. You have a good institutional already. You've only had one class B write-up in twenty-one years of incarceration. That was ten years ago. Is that right? That's right, sir. Your mental health level is five. You have no diagnosis and you're no medication. You have a low risk assessment, a low needs assessment, and you have multiple in-service awards from inter prison enterprises. How long have you worked with prison enterprises? I've worked on and off for them for ever since about 2013. And I see you also graduated as a healthcare orderly. Have you done any hospice work? The only, the only time I got to do the hospice work is when we got shipped to uh, Angola and I helped take care of a guy. I got to know him. He was on the tier. He was crippled on one side with a stroke. And so I helped him to chow him back, take a shower, be sure he got his clothes off, got him washed. And um, I really mean the guy got to be close, you know, and, and it really was a good feeling to help somebody that, can't, that cannot help themselves. Thank you. Our position, our position in this case comes from the victim's mother who submitted a letter of opposition and all agencies in the legal community, the judge, the DA's office, law enforcement is opposed. The victim of your offense is unopposed. As a matter of fact, she's in favor of your early release. She stated in a letter that she had reconciled with you 12 or 13 years ago. Yes, sir. And besides that, the victim is now married to your son, Zachary. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And how long has your son been married 
Miss Casey. Since uh, 2019. So, so, so about four years. Yes, sir. Okay, and I see your transition plan is also with your son and your daughter-in-law, and they say that they will support you until you got on your feet, and it would help you to find employment. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Ward Myers, do you have any comments, concerns, or remarks about oh, yeah. Mr. Yes, sir, Mr. Roche. Um, you know, Roland's done good. He's done very well. Conduct history is very good. Taking all their classes that he that he needs, and obviously, as you can hear, I think paid attention. Um, he is, as you mentioned earlier, currently enrolled in victim impact and thinking for a change. My my only recommendation in this case would be, no matter what the board decides today, that he complete these classes. Prior to his release. Thank you, Warren Myers. Madam Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Roche. Um, this time we'll hear from uh, the folks who've indicated they'd like to speak first. We'd like to ask Casey Thompson. Hey. Go ahead, ma'am. Um, I'm Casey. I am Roland's daughter in law. Um, I'm also the victim in his case. Um, I reached out to him in May 2010 because I was an adult then. I really wanted to understand as an adult why and how that could happen. Um, I never expected the response that I got. Um, he has taken responsibility and accountability and has never expressed anything but remorse for what happens. And not only to me, but my entire family who I didn't ever receive much support from, um, but his, his family, everybody involved. And I'm married to his son now. Um, we do plan on helping him out, finding him a job. Um, I would like to get him in mental health counseling just because I feel like that that would be a really good thing. Um, we just, we really wanna help him. I feel like, I feel like he is a different person now. I feel like he deserves a second chance. Um, and if I did not honestly feel that way, I would not. I would not be speaking on his behalf. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Harley Thompson. Hello, I'm Harley. I am Roland Thompson's daughter. Um, he's been the best father for, that he never had to be since the day he adopted me at the age of four. He's also a wonderful father to my siblings and a great grandfather to my grandchildren. We would all love to see him come home, build a better relationship with him. Um, I believe his strong faith in God will help keep him grounded once released. Um, and again, he does have a strong supporting family waiting to help him readjust. And we love him and thank you. Thank you, thank you ma'am. And uh, your aunt, Ms. Kathy Rogers. Okay, there we there go. You. Okay, yeah. sorry about that. Um, I've known David all of his life. I call him David, it's Roland. Um, he never was a bad kid. He got into this problem. He made some mistakes. And honestly, I've worked in the law system a lot in my life, and I believe that he is repaid for what he's doing. Now, I will tell you this. I know personally that he is a changed man. I can see it in his faith. We talk about his faith a lot. 
God is opening a door to him, and I hope and pray that y'all will see this. I think he's been re uh, conformed, and he understands what he did was wrong, and he's willing to take the rest of the time that he has to make up for what he's done wrong. And I think he, by doing all the classes he's done, I do believe that does show his diligence and wanting to be a better person. And like I say, I know for a fact that he's a changed man. He is a godly man now, and which I know we hear most people usually get reconformed and all that when they go into prison. I understand that. But I know from him, from knowing him before and after. And I just, my heart, my heart is saying, please let him out so he can be with his daddy, who is not in good health. And his mother's passed away while he was in prison. And that was a hard ordeal too. But please, I, I ask you to have mercy and grace and may God guide y'all. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it, Ms. Rogers. Thanks for your, uh, your remarks. Thank Mr. you. Thompson. Mr. Thompson, is there anything you'd like to say to us? Yes, ma'am. Um, I just want to say that I, I was at Richmond Parish Detention Center when I when I was pre-trial, and I'm very ashamed of what I did. And before I was sentenced, I got on the phone one day and I told my mom, I called her, and I told her, I said, Mom, I deserve time to do time for what I did. And uh, I just remember her, she said that, you know, she was just really impressed by that. So anyway, I wanted to understand what caused me to do such a thing like that. And when I heard, a couple of years later after I was sentenced, I heard about this program and I didn't know there were certain, I didn't know there were classes and things that you take. I had no, no idea about prison. So I went to the warden at Richmond Paris and asked him, to send me to where I can take these courses. So he got me into the DOC system. I ended up in Winfield. And I learned a lot while I was at Winfield. I took some courses. And I matured while I was at Winfield. And I, I grew up. I know I was 33 years old when this all started. But I didn't know anything about life. I didn't understand. You know, I was just, I was just a child in a grown body. I had no mental understanding. But while I was there, I grew up where I was at Winfield for 13 years. And um, I got around some good people. Started going to church. And I and I wanted to be a better person. I, I One thing I, I, I realized right off was that when the person becomes incarcerated, he's never going to be that person again. He can either be better or he can be worse but I chose to be the better. And uh, so I, I am a better person nowadays. And I look back over these 21 years and I'm not angry about doing them because I've learned so much and I wouldn't be the person I am today if it wasn't for me, wouldn't for this time that I've done. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Executive session, please. We have a motion second. and a second for executive session to discuss confidential matters. I do agree, so it's unanimous. So uh, stand by. We'll be in executive session for just a few moments. Mr. Thompson, we are prepared to vote, and uh, Mr. Rush, will be voting first. Mr. Thompson. Yes, sir. Based upon the victim is unopposed, you've served at least 85% of your sentence. You have excellent programs. Disciplinary conduct is good. And you have positive remarks by one my, my but he said that you needed some additional programming and he would like you to with me uh, the program that you're currently in, which is a victim impact, and thank you for a change. 
So my decision is to grant conditionally upon completion of thinking for a change and victim impact. After release, you are to follow all requirements for your sex offender contract. You have a curfew from nine to six, and you are to do community service with a charitable organization or a nonprofit. And uh, most of the time, these people need uh, people to cook with them. And you have a and you have a diploma in culinary arts, and I want you to uh, volunteer to cook for a food bank or some non profit or charitable organization. Yes, Mr. Freeman. Um, due to the fact that there's no victim opposition and you have a good prison record, my vote is the same. All right. And uh... Mr. Thompson, my vote's a little different. Um, there was very strong opposition from the DA's office, very strong opposition from law enforcement. Uh, due to the nature and circumstances of the crime, my vote today is to deny your parole. Uh, so today, so yours requires a unanimous vote. You received two votes that were favorable, one vote that was not. So today, sir, your parole's been denied. 